All right, guys, it's time. It is the week that we've all been waiting for. It is the start of fantasy hockey playoffs. Some of you start a little bit earlier. Some of you start a little bit later. But for the most part, week 23 is week one of fantasy hockey playoffs. So we want to give you guys as much information possible to make the best decisions for your upcoming week. We are going to be covering the best streamers. We are going to be covering the best schedules. We are going to be covering the best add and drop strategies in this video to ensure that you guys have the everything available to you to be successful in your week one of fantasy hockey playoffs. Quick note, remember guys, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to stream somebody just because you have players that are on a bad schedule. Like if I have Nikita Kucherov, for example, and he plays three games and they're all, you know, busy nights, I'm not dropping Nikita Kucherov just to play some random guy from waivers for five games. Like be critical of your team, understand who is untouchable and who you are actually able to drop and get away with dropping. With that being said, let's kick off the video guys. Here is your week 23 preview. Typically what you see out of the NHL is they like to do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday as the off nights for the week for the NHL. This week, it's only the Monday, the Wednesday, and the Friday. Saturday, Sunday is jam packed with games. There's a lot of teams that have back to backs during that time. Um, so we want to be conscious of that, that we're not necessarily streaming somebody that per se has an off night on the Sunday because it's technically not even an off night if you look at the schedule and the amount of games. I think there's like 11, on Saturday and 10 on Sunday. So it's just as busy as we see the Saturday normally is. But starting things off, the Washington Capitals, they play four games, three of which are off nights. They get the Monday, the Wednesday, the Friday, and the Sunday. So they are going to be your primary source of streamer players for this upcoming week because they are the only team that gets three off nights. Seattle has a pretty peculiar week. They kind of split. They go like off night on the Monday, back to like two busy nights, then to, to an herb. A busy night then an off night then a busy night again so they kind of alternate so it's tough to kind of mix them into your your add and drop kind of scheme to to ensure that you have the most games and the most off nights possible buffalo carolina toronto all play four games and have one off night so they're honestly like not a bad option as well and then i also threw in dallas and arizona for a couple reasons that i'll go over in a little bit but they only play three games but they do have two off nights so that could be really beneficial for some players if you have multiple ads looking at our worst schedule again it is the tuesday the thursday and then the saturday and the sunday three games zero off nights for these 12 teams this isn't again this is a good thing guys like whenever you see a, a schedule in playoffs where the worst schedule is only three games there isn't a single team that plays two games this is a good thing that means if you built your team the way that you wanted to and you're being successful and you're seeing a uh, good performance from your players you want them to play as much as possible and you're not going to have a circumstance where you know you only have uh sydney crosby playing two games or you only have Connor mcdavid playing two games so this is pretty ideal that you know you're at least getting three games out of all of your players throughout the week moving on to your best add and drop schedule so the first way to go about that I, I i know this looks kind of jank right now but bear with me i'll kind of work my way through it the number one thing that you want to do is start with an ad at the beginning of the week. There's two ways that you can go about this. Your first ad is either going to be a Washington Capital or a Buffalo Saver. Let's let's just start with Washington, for example. Because they have three off nights, the Monday, the Wednesday, and the Friday, you're going to add a Washington Capital at the beginning of your week, hold him until the 22nd, then you're going to drop and pick up one of these nine teams on the right for March 23rd and 24th. The reason is because all of these teams play a back-to-back -back on Saturday and Sunday. That means that you are getting five possible games through this schedule and three off nights with your Washington player. Alternatively, your other option is to pick up a Buffalo Sabres player because they have a back-to-back -back on the Monday and the Tuesday. You're gonna get two games out of them to start your week, and then you can transition to a Caps player, a uh, Arizona player, or a Dallas player because during the March 22nd and March, or March 20th and March 22nd, they both have an off night uh, for both those games so you're still technically getting five games from this schedule and you're getting three off nights as well it's just a different combination of players you still end up with three off nights and two busy nights but that is primarily the best possible schedule for you to get the maximum amount of games played and maximum amount of off nights for the week now moving on to our streamers these are my main forward streamers these are the guys that i am looking to get on my team immediately and Starting things off, 
Dylan Strom of uh, the Washington Capitals has been absolutely lights out. I'm still mind boggled that this guy is not over 60% owned. He's been unbelievable. He continues to be good production wise, shot volume. He'll chip in, uh, you know, hits and blocks here and there as well. He's just so good. They recently took him off line one, uh, but I really don't think that has stalled his production at all. Even though he's not playing with Ovi, he is still power play one with Ovi. So he's finding production there as well. He's just my number one target for the entire week, given the schedule and the fact that he's been lights out. Oliver Bjorkstrand of the Seattle Kraken. Again, remember how I mentioned that Seattle is difficult to kind of, uh, even though they have two off nights, you can't like do something with what you can with Washington, where you can pick up a player, have him for three games, drop him and pick up uh, two guys on the weekend that have a back-to-back -back because he kind of alternates in terms of his off nights and his busy nights. But again, Bjorkstrand has been great. He scores a ton, he shoots a ton, he chips in and hits a couple blocks here and there as well. I think he's a really, really good option. He's playing consistent minutes in Seattle, 29% owned line two and power play two. Um, nothing wrong with that. I think he's a really, really good option. You get him for two off nights if you don't like anybody on Washington or you can't get to a guy like Dylan Strom. TJ Oshie recently came back off of injury. I'm a little bit hesitant about him. Obviously, like I would much rather a guy like Dylan Strom who's a little bit safer, but Oshie is playing line one and power play one alongside Ovechkin. They recently uh, have started playing Connor McMichael on that top line with Ovi, who I will talk about in the next slide. But Oshie's been very solid before he had this little injury issue uh, over the past couple games. Uh, he was on an absolute tear. He was very, very good in, in terms of point production. He's usually a great categories player where he'll get you a couple shots, a couple hits, and a couple blocks almost every single game. If you count faceoffs, even better. He chips in in those as well. But again, a little bit of a lower ownership player that most of you will be able to get to that I think still has some upside playing line one and power play one. Um, again, really, really good option for you guys that are in deeper leagues. I would highly recommend Oshi. And then Tavo Teravainen did not travel to Toronto this weekend. The Leafs play at the Canes tonight. Um, from what I've read, it's not a significant injury. It's just a little bit of um, something going on with him where he just can't play today. Uh, so I wouldn't be too worried about it. I would monitor that situation. The thing with Carolina is it's a very top heavy team. So it's tough to kind of get some of their higher end players when you're a streamer. Uh, but if you're in a more shallow league, I think Teravainen should be good to go. Uh, just keep an eye on that on your on Sunday night and see if he's available or not. Um, chances are, again, he's going to be a little bit more difficult to get to, but he's been lights out recently as well in terms of production, playing line one, power play two. Uh, just a fantastic ad, in my opinion, for this week. You get him for four games, even though it's one off night. Uh, if for whatever reason, people have already started adding Caps players and Seattle Kraken players, and you're kind of just stuck with picking the scraps, um, chances are Teravainen probably won't even be available, but... Uh, and those of you that are in a little bit more shallow release, if Dylan Strom's not available, uh, see if Tara Vinen's there. I think he's a great option. All right, moving on to some other forward streams that I think are viable for week 23. Up first, we have Nick Schmaltz. He is, uh, again, only plays three games, but two of which are off nights. He's been absolutely lights out. He's back on line one, power play one. They've kind of been moving him up and down because of the recent woes that have happened in Arizona, but he is now looking like he's being a mainstay on line one. Sign a right wing eligible. We know how scarce right wing is as a position. 28% owned should be readily available to you guys. You get a line one power play one player who has been producing really, really well recently. Uh, gets you shots, uh, chips and hits, chips and blocks uh, every once in a while. He's not as great in terms of those peripheral stats, but the production and the power play points is definitely what set him apart from basically everybody else on this list. So highly recommend Schmaltz if you can get to him. If you're doing that kind of Buffalo strategy that I mentioned earlier uh, and you need to you know transition off of a, a Sabres player, up next is Tyler Bertuzzi. He's been pretty, I want to say inconsistent with his scoring, but at least he's starting to score now. Four games, one off nights for the Leafs. You can do, essentially do the same thing that you can with Buffalo, where you essentially have uh, an early start player that you want to grab onto your team like Bertuzzi. He has been playing line two. Um, him and Nylander have seemed to have found a lot of chemistry recently, and he's playing power play one and being very successful in that as well. So he's kind of started to heat up a little bit. I would look at him just because he's got four games and one off night if you need a player. 
Yanni Gord, again, just because of the schedule, you get him for two off nights and two busy nights. Line two, power play two, very, very consistent in terms of his minutes. I know a lot of people on the Seattle Kraken are kind of like inconsistent in terms of, you know, sometimes they play 15 minutes a night, sometimes they play 18. Gord's been very, very consistent. He's playing a very solid role on that team. He touches every single category that you want out of him. Uh, shots, hits, blocks, face-offs, if you count those. And he's been pretty solid in terms of his production as well. And if you're in a deeper league, I think he's one of the best options available to you. It was between Paterka and Zach Benson for me. Uh, both have been solid. Benson's gotten really hot over the last couple games, but he's a little bit more inconsistent in terms of those peripheral stats. So I decided to go with Paterka, who's a little bit more consistent in terms of his shot volume, his hits, and his blocks. Again, a lower ownership option for you guys if you need a player that plays four games uh, throughout this week. And then Connor McMichael, again, playing line one with Alex Ovechkin. If you're in a deeper league, I think this guy holds some upside. He's going to be playing top six minutes in Washington, three off nights. It's again, one of the best schedules, if not the best schedule for the week. Nothing but upside here with Connor McMichael, even though he's 2% owned. He's very inconsistent in terms of his production and his peripheral stats. But again, there is upside there if you're in a super, super deep league and you want to stream one of the better available players for you guys. When it comes to defensemen, again, there isn't a lot. I think Bowen Byram is the number one option if you have anybody available, regardless of schedule. He has been absolutely lights out since he's joined the Buffalo Sabres. Um, currently around a point a game, he's shooting, he's hitting, he's chipping in some blocks here and there. He's playing a ton of minutes. He's pair one and power play one. They've decided to run him and Darlene on power play one alongside Tage um, Skinner. And I believe it's Tuck on that line also. Adam Larson, again, really, really good peripherals option. You get shots, you get hits, you get blocks out of him. Uh, isn't really great in terms of scoring, but again, given the schedule, if you need a peripherals D, I think that's a good option for you guys. Rasmus Sandin is somebody that I wasn't really sure I was even going to include on here, but because of the schedule, I think there is a little bit of upside. Pair two, power play two. Again, if you need a defenseman stream, if one of your guys goes down, if you're just trying to get max amount of games out of a player this week, I think Sandin's a good option. He kind of is, is inconsistent with those peripheral stats. He'll chip in shots, hits and blocks here and there. His scoring has been relatively inconsistent, but I think given the schedule, I think that's fine. Um, there is upside still playing on pair two and power play two. If you go look at his game log, he's been, you know, he's been all right for a 14% owned defenseman. Uh, Jacob Slavin, 31% owned pair one and power play two. This one is just, a, again, a, a solid defenseman that you can rely on to get you some, some stats here and there. A couple shots, couple hits, couple blocks type thing. Um, probably a little bit lighter on the hits for Slavin, but again, four games and one off night, 31% owned should be readily available to most people. If you can't, if you can't get to like a Byram or a Larson, honestly, Martin Ferrari could be the best option out of all these defensemen. I'd say outside of Bowen Byram, um, just because of how good he is when it comes to hits. Uh, if you count hits in your league, this guy's an absolute bangers gem. He just came off of IR. I'd highly recommend grabbing him. If you don't have him available, or if you don't count hits in your league, for example, you probably want to look somewhere else. But again, the D streams are very, very slim as of usual at this point in the season, guys. Uh, so I apologize if I'm not giving you guys any tier one recommendations. But again, if Bone Byram's available, he should be added on your team immediately if you can. And then if you're looking for a D stream, I think any four of these options are solid. They're not going to be the best options, obviously, because they're waiver players, but they should be solid given their schedule and given the fact that some of them have really good floors. And finally, guys, our goaltending, there is a lot of good options just simply because of the fact that there is a back-to-back -back for almost every single team on the Sunday. But starting us off, we have Philip Grubauer. He started to become more of the starter as of late. So it's very possible he sees more games than the two that I have highlighted here, but they do play a back-to-back. -back. One is against Vegas, one is against Arizona. They've kind of just been alternating goalies as of late. So I think regardless, Grubauer is going to get you a solid start. Uh, I, I'm obviously a lot more in favor of him starting against Arizona than in Vegas, but we'll see what the schedule is with him and Decord. But again, really solid option. He's been playing well as of late, so highly recommend grabbing him if you need a goaltender. Casey DeSmith is now essentially the starter for the Vancouver Canucks with Thatcher Demko going down for the next two to three weeks. He could be just a great volume add for you guys going forward, just given the fact that Vancouver is an absolute wagon and he will get you a ton of wins, regardless of whether or not he lets in three goals or not. He's going to get peppered with shots, 38% uh, owned. He's going to have a good schedule for this week. They, they play three games and none of them are off nights. So if you have two starting goaltenders, chances are you probably don't want to add to Smith to your team just because you're not going to be able to fit him in unless you have a goalie that you know plays an off night, for example, or a back-to-back -back situation, a guy like Grubauer. And then take your pick out of Stolarz, Pickard, and Jonas Johansson. 
all really good options, all favorable matchups on their respective back-to-backs. You've got Stolarz against Philly, Picard against Ottawa, and Johansson against Anaheim. So whichever one you feel most comfortable with or whichever one is available to you guys, highly recommend one of these three players. Um, I can't think of anything else uh, other than that. So goalies, really, really good option for this week. That is going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed. I try to give you guys the most amount of detail possible for this upcoming week. Good luck in your fantasy hockey matchups. I will see you in the next video. Have yourselves a fantastic rest of the day.